Greetings Petroheads, welcome back to Automation the Car Company Tycoon Game. Today, um, actually, Sedan 57 Chevy has made a prediction. Uh, it is exactly what I what I did next. It is uh, introducing the next generation of the large saloon um, that uh, would probably compete with like the smaller Cadillacs that uh, have, had been introduced in 1975. Um, yeah, so this is the SL3, and it comes with the same engine options as the HS1. Um, so, mechanically speaking, we got a steel space frame, double wishbones all around again. I'm trying to, you know, maybe do something a little bit different from, you know, the norm in America because after all we are a luxury brand we are a premium car maker that um, you know is building expensive cars so um, might as well you might as well be getting your money's worth right when you when you spend a lot of money on a car like this and that is also why we have aluminium panels here it says no mass production but that is totally okay because Athena is not a company to mass produce cars anyway so, uh, yeah, as far as the looks go, I did something similar to the HS1 on, on the rear and then on the front we have dual rectangular headlights, some fog lights and a similar like chrome plus uh, indicator arrangement that we have on the rear and also on the HS1. Um, it is rear drive of course, there's no option for all wheel drive. I mean, 4x4 four four is not really the same thing. And uh, again, it's the 3 liter in 96. It's literally unchanged. It's even the 74 um, year um, engine. <laughs> it's, it's from the same year even. We just uh, carried it uh, straight over. But the big difference here is that it is now 1975 and we have four speed automatics available. So that's what you're getting in this one. Um, got an open diff, which I think is totally okay. We're not making much wheel spin anyway, because the engine is not stupid powerful. Um, medium compound tires, 15 inch alloy rims this time, because I just feel like alloy rims just add that much more prestige. Just, uh, you know, at some point we gotta start, uh, at some point we gotta start uh, fitting at least alloy rims to our, onto our cars because you know other other prestigious um, brands are starting to do that as well so you know it's about time and um, we get vented discs available now which you know we're going full out on, on those <laughs> I'm going with the two piston vented discs biggest possible size with the given rim size um, solid discs on the rear Because uh, again, they are enough. We don't have brake fade for once um, And that's I think the first large saloon we've built that uh, doesn't get brake fade. So that's that's good Then we have no under tray fully clad under trays are available now in case we want those in the future. I don't know um, And then we have the usual 5c 10 mate luxury track advanced safety with power steering and hydro pneumatic springs and very drivable handling characteristics so 44.5 drivability is i think the, the highest yet in a large saloon that we've built and uh, comfort is ridiculously high like 51.1 i i haven't built many cars in the past that have a comfort rating this high and you know that's of course awesome if uh, if comfort is you know basically the main selling point for your cars uh i add a 20 percent markup so we're at twenty nine thousand one hundred and sixty dollars and that was that would be 2016 money so 1975 would be probably around four thousand which is not cheap of course but yeah, there, there are there are certainly more expensive cars out there at that point. Um, 
And then the next version is going to be the SL340 with the 4 liter Rados V8 that we also use in the HS1 with 190 horsepower. It isn't all that bad that that power output for you know where we're at at the moment. Uh, economy of course is pretty damn bad, but that was just how it was back then. You know the the engines didn't make that much power per liter, um, but you know they were also not particularly economical as a result of the fact that. Um, he had to lower the compression or make the engine run richer in order to run on the now lower octane fuel. And, uh, you know, of course, other things as well. Again, we have a four speed automatic ILA rims, 15 inch diameter. We have a little bit more wheel spin now, but it's still not that bad. And then we have vented discs once again. Just virtually the same that you also get. Oh, do we have brake fade now? Yeah. Okay. Well, wait, 270 is what it was before. This would actually lower drivability, bonus, comfort, and prestige if we went for bigger brakes here. And it wouldn't even help us with stopping that distance, so we know what. There we go. Um, interior is the same. Suspension setup has been, you know, tweaked just a little bit by uh, decreasing the spring stiffness so that we make this beautiful, uh, not suspension graph, but um, handling graph once again. C because, of course, adding a bigger engine to the front adds more weight to the front, and that'll change the car's balance overall. So, um, this one does 0 to 100 in 8.3 seconds, which I, f which I feel like is not even that bad um, for, the, for the given time. And just a quarter mile in 16.5 seconds, which is probably faster than, you know, a lot of Cadillacs with similar power outputs. Um, it is also pretty light thanks to the aluminium body panels. And uh, this would... Oh, we don't have a markup on this one yet. This would, of course, be quite a bit more expensive than the N96 version. Um, but again, you're getting a V8 now. Um, to be honest, this would probably put a, put a lot of uh, potential customers off because it uses so much fuel. And uh, yeah, it may not be our most successful model. But of course, let me know what you think on that. Um, again, it's not like, you know, the saloons in that in, in that period of time were particularly economical. They just weren't, um, unless they had tiny engines and uh, took a hundred years to reach a hundred kilometers an hour, if they even did. Well, at that point, nineteen seventy-five, pretty much all cars went over a hundred kilometers an hour. But yeah, so this is the SL three. I think that this is. Mm, I I I think this is gonna have a little bit of a hard time on the market, not because it's a bad car, but because it's just, you know, it's just not economical at all. It's 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 it uses so much fuel in terms, and in the times of uh, fuel crisis, you know, people would rather spend less money on say. You know a, a golf and uh, that would also use a lot less fuel and um, I mean if if they if they were concerned about the fuel crisis if they're not and they just want a quick saloon then um, of course they 
It would buy uh, something that's not a golf. <laughs> And if they want that uh, saloon to be, you know, decently quick and also luxurious, then uh, somebody might buy our car. Um, can I now? No, it, it doesn't allow me to do these things now. I don't, I don't know. It's just, it just gives me an error message and says I can't do it. The, you know, factories and employees tab. I don't know what causes that, but I've had that a couple of times recently wait is this yeah for some reason it didn't save, save the cooling airflow here so now we're back up to good reliability and it'll still reach 200 grams now which is not bad at all for for a saloon car in 1975 in the fuel crisis <laughs> Yeah, not too bad. Um, right, so I think that's gonna sum it up for for this episode of Automation. I hope you enjoyed. Leave a like or a comment if you did. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.